Well, we're living in a world where Asia is coming back, uh, which I think is a good thing, uh, that we, by the introduction, really, of sort of Western economic policies, or the element of opening up of their societies and their economies, they are starting to develop again. And the billions of people that are there in Asia, they are more than the people that we have in Europe or the people that we have in America, they're going to be big. That's good. It's a rebalancing or a balancing back of the world to where it should have been all the time. Um, so we shouldn't complain, we should rejoice at that. As for the transatlantic relationship and the pivot, yeah, there are significant strategic challenges in East Asia, also problems. I mean, the Korean Peninsula is probably the most dangerous place that you can find in the world today in terms of the peace and war issues. While Europe, that used to be uh, the place that could blow up and in, blow up the world, is now at peace. Um, so it's a different relationship. Um, but I do think that it's, it's important in the sense that we are the key partners uh, for sort of literally any sort of solution to any sort of global issue that you find. Although I don't really accept it's a Eurozone crisis. I mean, I'm coming from the north of Europe, and uh, if I see our neighbors, we are not in the Eurozone, but if I see uh, our neighbors uh, in the Eurozone, uh, Finland or Estonia or not to speak about Germany, I mean, their economies are doing very well. I mean, Northern Europe is doing well, uh, be that in the Eurozone or be that outside of the Eurozone. Uh, some countries in Southern Europe, notably, are doing less well. But that is not the fault of the Euro is the mismanagement of economic policies of those particular countries and is by undertaking reforms of the national policies of those particular countries that they can overcome their crisis. It does impact on the euro and the euro countries are trying to help uh, but it's not a crisis of the euro really.